Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD for 3ds Max. In this video, we look at how to use multiple sources and emitters to create more complex simulations like a fireball in outer space. Now, let's see how we can use multiple emitters. Create a sphere with about a 45 centimeter radius. In the Phoenix toolbar, click the Create a Fire Smoke Simulator icon and click and drag a volume like so around the sphere. In the Create panel, Grid Rollout, adjust the size to 188 by 188 by 150, then move the sphere up to the center of the volume. Click the Create a Fire Smoke Source icon in the toolbar and place it in the scene like so. In the Modify panel, click the Add button and then select the sphere to connect it to the source. Notice that the Emit mode is set to Surface Force by default. This will use the surface of the emitter, our sphere, to discharge the fluid along the object's normals. Set the outgoing velocity, also known as discharge, to 5. Turn on Auto Key and go to frame 51 and change outgoing velocity to 0 to turn the discharge off. Go to frame 50 and set this back to 5 to keep the discharge going from frame 0 all the way to 50, turning off at 51. Go to frame 0 and start the sim. You can see that the sphere starts emitting from its surface in the first few frames, so stop the sim. Select the simulator, open its dynamics rollout, and turn standard gravity to 0, so the smoke will not rise. For this particular source, we only want smoke, so select the source and turn off temperature. Start simulating again and we only have smoke on the surface. Stop the sim. Let's break up the smoke a bit more. Select the source and in the modify panel, general rollout, in the emit mode section, click the none button next to mask and select a noise texture. Open the Material Editor and drag that Noise Texture to the Diffuse Color Map button of a material and instance the noise to it. You can of course do this in the Slate as well. Now click the Map button to access the texture's parameters. Select the volume and delete the caches from the previous simulations by clicking on the Trash Can icon in the toolbar and then click the Yes button. Add the material to the sphere and then click to enable Show Shaded Material in Viewport to see the noise on that sphere. In the coordinates rollout, change the source to Explicit Map Channel. In the Noise Parameters rollout, reduce the size to 0.2 and the noise type to Fractal. Then change levels to 5, noise threshold high to 0.795 and the low to 0.794. The noise texture appears all black in the viewport. Now the high and low values that I set don't have to be those numbers exactly, so feel free to experiment with your own high-low values as long as they are close together like 0.795 and 0.794. Turn Auto Key on and go to frame 50. Set the low threshold to about 0.48. Let's also animate the phase at frame 50 as well to 0.2 and then turn off auto key. Scrub the animation and the noise appears slowly over 50 frames. Start the simulation by selecting the simulation container and in the modify panel, click start in the simulation rollout. I'll elapse just under a minute of sim time here and you'll notice that the smoke animates over time according to the animation of the noise texture on the sphere. Expand the preview rollout and in the GPU preview section, turn on enable in viewport. Now switch the viewport to wireframe to see it easier. We'll add more smoke. Select the fire source and change the smoke multiplier from 1 to 2. The next thing to do is select the sphere, right click and open the Phoenix FD properties to make the sphere a non-solid object by unchecking solid object option. This way the sphere won't interact with other emitters that we'll start creating next. 
shift drag the sphere to the left slightly and choose object copy. Set this sphere to be slightly smaller at a radius of about 40 centimeters. Then center that inner sphere to the outer sphere. Change the color of the second sphere to make it easier to see. Click the Create a Fire Smoke Source icon in the toolbar and place another helper in the scene. In the Modify panel, click the Add button and then press H for the Pick Object dialog to select the inner sphere easily to connect it to the source. For this second sphere source, use Volume Brush for the Emit mode. The Volume Brush mode will fill the volume of the emitter object gradually over time as a percentage set by the Brush Effect value and will animate that to let the sphere slowly fill up with temperature. Now note that the volume modes require your emitter to be non-solid, so when it's not you will be prompted automatically to change that. We're just using this for temperature, so turn off smoke and go to frame 5 and turn on auto key. Set the brush effect to 60. Go to frame 34 and set that to 30 and at frame 35, set it back to 60. At frame 50, set the value again to 60, and at frame 51, enter a value of 0 to turn it off, and turn off Auto Key. Start the sim, and let's take a look. After about a minute, the smoke shows up, but I don't see anything in the middle yet, so we need to tweak our render settings. Select the simulator, and in the rendering rollout, Click the Volumetric Options button. In the Fire rollout, select the bottom point of the graph and change the lowest point for the fire to 600 Kelvin, so that the heat we're building up is visible in the sim sooner than the default setting of 800 Kelvin. Then set the Fire Multiplier to 2 and set the Physically Based Multiplier to 0.4 to help us see the intensity of the fire more closely to the graph we just set and have less of a black body shader where the lower temperatures are invisible and the higher temperatures become extremely bright. Our value of 0.4 is a balanced solution that allows for both the sphere to charge up and the explosion that follows later to look good as well. And there we have it. I'll speed up about a minute of sim time and I'll stop the simulation. If I scrub my timeline, my inner sphere gradually fills with fire. Back to frame 0. Select the inner sphere, duplicate it by shift dragging it, and set that third sphere to be even smaller with a radius of around 30 centimeters. Center it within the two other spheres and set it to be a different color. Just like we've done before, create a third fire smoke source from the toolbar and place it in the scene. In the Modify panel, General Rollout, press Add and use the Pick Object window with the hotkey H to pick Sphere 3. For this one, we're going to use Volume Inject as the Emit mode. This will use the volume as well for the emission, but this time the fluid will discharge with added pressure. Set inject power to zero. Turn on auto key and go to frame 50 and set a key at 2000. Then at frame 49, set a key at zero and at frame 51, set it back to zero to create a quick burst. Now you can see that this creates an explosion, but check this out. We can add a negative value to the inject power for an implosion. At frame 80, Create a key at 0, then on 81, set a key at negative 5000 to have a big explosion starting at 50, which will get sucked in again at frame 81. Select the simulator and in the Modify panel, Grid Rollout, set Adaptive Grid to Smoke and lower the threshold to 0 0.1 so it will be more sensitive in expanding the grid and then add an extra margin of 20 to better detect a fast moving sim. Now since I already know how the sim looks all the way up to frame 50, I'm going to select the simulation grid and go to the simulation rollout 
and change the start frame to 50 to save a little bit of sim time. And then I'll start the simulation. After about 30 seconds, you can see the explosion. I'd like to add some nice swirls to the explosion though. So go to the dynamics rollout and go ahead and stop your sim to make the tweaks quickly. In the conservation section, increase the quality to 40 to give us nicer swirls. The higher the conservation quality, the stronger the explosion shock wave and the better the negative inject will work. With a lower conservation quality, it would not be able to draw in all the smoke from the explosion. Now while we're here, let's make the sim look a little cooler. Expand the rendering rollout and click volumetric options. We have an explosion without gravity like we're in outer space, so let's change the lower color to green. To make this look much hotter, increase the fire multiplier to something like 20, even though it might look a little bit too hot at the beginning of the explosion. Now, if I move to frame 19, I'm going to lose the gradual filling of my sphere, so let's animate the fire multiplier. Go to frame 50, set the fire multiplier to 2, turn on auto key, set the fire multiplier to 2. Then on frame 51, set it to 20. Turn off auto key. Step forward a few frames to frame 56 and expand the smoke color rollout and change the constant color to an interesting color, like something with a purplish tint, and then close the window. Let's add a light to the scene. In the V-Ray toolbar, click the V-Ray sun and draw out its direction in the front view like this and click No when asked to add a V-Ray Sky environment map. In the Modify panel for the Sun, turn the Intensity Multiplier down to 0.01. Frame up the shot in the Perspective view as you like to see it, and select the Simulator Grid. In the Simulation rollout, set the Start Frame back to 0. In the Grid rollout, click the Increase Resolution button twice and go ahead and start the simulation. I'll elapse some time here to show you how the simulation works. And here, let me show you a render of this explosion. Thanks for joining us for this quick start video on using multiple sources and emitters to make a cool outer space explosion using Phoenix FD for 3ds Max.